was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Happy Easter, everyone, and welcome to online worship with Bel Air United Methodist Church. My name's Sean. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm so glad that we can worship together this Easter Sunday morning. You know, our world is very different than it was just a month ago. A whole lot of plans have changed. A whole lot of things have been canceled But this morning we celebrate the things that do not change. The fact that God loves us, that God came into the world for us, that God has conquered death and pours new life into the world. Easter is certainly different this year, but Easter is not canceled. No, Christ is alive and we live in him. Since the very beginning, Christians on Easter Sunday morning 
proclaim this truth with a simple call and response. Someone like me, standing in a place like this, shouts, Christ is risen. And everyone who can hear shouts back, he is risen indeed. And together we say, Alleluia, Amen. As we enter into worship this morning, would you join me as we, with Christians all over the world, do that same call and response? My friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you for being here this blessed Easter morning. I invite you to say hello to the rest of the Bel Air UMC church family in the comments below. And if you're here for the first time today, welcome. Now, let us worship God together as we sing.
Good morning. I'm Latoya Simpson, one of the pastors at Bel Air United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful to be with you, and I hope you'll join me in prayer this morning. Just as we've done in previous weeks, we encourage you to respond in prayer. Now this morning, since it's Easter Sunday, the response will be a little bit different. I will say, Lord, you have risen, and you will respond, risen Lord, hear our prayers. I hope you'll pray with me. Almighty God, maker of all things, judge and lover of all persons, you have blessed us to see and celebrate this Easter morning. We thank you with our whole hearts, O oh Lord, for this day and for the resurrection of your precious, precious son, Jesus Christ. Through your only son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the Lord's resurrection be renewed by your spirit this day, having confidence and faith that we too will arise from death to life through your light and love. Now, O oh Lord, though we may not be able to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion today together in the sanctuary, we remember the, th the great thanksgiving. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. Though we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered from us from slavery to sin and death and made covenant to be our sovereign God. And you have set before us the way of life. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through your resurrection of your son from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, now, we are your people. Help us to declare the wonderful deeds of Christ and stand in intercession for others on this faithful journey. We pray now for those who lack food, work, shelter, not only in the midst of this overwhelming time of uncertainty and worry, but those who suffer lack every day. We ask that you would provide for them, that you would renew them, and that you would bless them in every way. Help us who claim you as a Lord to show compassion, love, and support to our communities in spiritual and tangible ways and extend your love and light. Lord, you have risen. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are in need of connection, communion, and companionship. Give us grace to be patient to be creative, and to be open to new possibilities and friendships in spite of our circumstances, knowing that you are able to do all things. Lord, you have risen. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. We pray also for those who mourn the death of a loved one. Bring peace and comfort that passes understanding and confidence that we will see our beloved departed again in the day of resurrection. Lord, you have risen. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for those affected by the coronavirus in our communities and throughout the world. So many are suffering and struggling in ways most of us cannot imagine. We pray for healing, for a cure, for protection, for hope and endurance. We know that you are able to provide. So we ask for healing and a cure. We know that you, risen Lord, are able to do anything but fail. So we ask with hope, with faith, that you are able to do this by your power. Lord, you have risen. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, you are the great healer of every disease. You have blessed some people in this world with special gifts, talents, and positions to be a part of the healing process in hospitals, clinics, and medical environments all throughout the world. Be with them now. Calm their fears. Renew their minds. Resurrect them in life so that they may continue to do good in the world and do good for your glory. Help them to feel your presence. Help them to feel and show your love to every patient and support person that they engage with. On this Resurrection Sunday, renew their hope as only you can. Lord, you have risen. Risen Lord, Hear our prayers. Help us, O oh Lord, to know that you are near and you draw all persons near to you. Help us to feel close to you and close to one another, though we are physically distant. Thank you, Father, for bridging the gap as only you can between us through the cross on this resurrection day. 
All this we pray in the name of the risen Lord, by faith, with eternal hope. Amen and amen. If you're gathered around your screen worshiping with kids this morning, I want to make sure that you know we've put together a special Easter video message just for kids from Mingo Williamson, our director of children's ministries. You'll be able to find that right here when the service is over. So if you're worshiping via Facebook this morning, you'll find it in a post on our page. If you're worshiping via YouTube, you'll find it right here on our YouTube channel. But right now, I want to tell you two stories about how our church is making a difference in our community this week. And it's not because we've got it all figured out. It's because the Spirit of God is alive and at work in you. A few days ago, I got a phone call from a woman I know who works at an assisted living facility here in our neighborhood. It's a pretty high anxiety place to live and work right now. And she was looking for a way to, to bring some joy to residents and staff. She wondered if we might want to help. I said, sure, anything. She said, how about making some Easter baskets? The next day, I got an email from a small group here at the church that said, hi, our small group's ready to help. Is there anything we can do? I sent off a quick reply, want to make a hundred Easter baskets? Immediately, they accepted the challenge. They put together a hundred Easter goodie bags that we've delivered to the residents and the staff at that assisted living facility. It makes a big difference in this overwhelming season. A similar thing was happening with our children's ministry. Mingo and her team put together and delivered something like 60 egg hunt kits for families with little kids in the church. It's amazing. And that's the work of the church, to bring joy and love into people's lives every day. So if you want to be a part of that, if you want to help make a difference in our neighborhood, I'm going to invite you to give, to make a financial gift and to do it joyfully and generously. Because when you do, you make a big difference in people's lives. You can give online right now at belairumc.org slash give. You can give by text, by texting the word give to the number on your screen, or you could send a check to the address on the screen. Every gift makes a difference, no matter the size. Because every gift makes the work of the church possible. And every gift is a sign that you are trusting God to work through you and what you have to offer. So in a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving to God, let's pray. Living God, you have given us so much in Jesus Christ. Hope, joy, love, peace. Above all, you have given us life. What can we give in return? If the whole world were ours, it would not be enough. But what we have, God, we offer to you. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let's pray. Almighty God, pour out your spirit on us and open us up. Open our ears and our eyes, our hearts and our minds that we might hear a word from you. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts will be acceptable and pleasing to you, God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark. Listen for the word of God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Easter morning, there are a lot of places that ought to be full of life, but instead are dead, quiet, empty. Like this room where I'm standing, this great, big, beautiful sanctuary. It's empty. I had imagined it so differently when this year began. I had imagined this being like every other Easter Sunday, full. A room full of people, a room full of energy, a room that, that exploded out onto the front lawn for an Easter egg hunt. This whole corner at Bel Air and Newcastle, full bursting with life. But it's not just this place, it's every place. Every place that we imagine should be full is dead quiet, empty. Baseball stadiums, beaches, bars, the best brunch spots, schools, offices, playgrounds, empty. And I wonder if maybe, just maybe, that helps us understand Easter, and I mean really understand Easter, in a way that we never could before. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, three women began walking to Jesus' tomb, a place they thought would be full, full of the broken body of the man they loved, full of the stench of his death. They began walking to a place they knew would be closed. Who will roll away the stone for us, they ask. And when they get to where they were going, not only had the tomb been miraculously opened, but it was empty. It was exactly the opposite of what they knew they would find. And they discovered that on Easter, and perhaps especially this Easter, all bets are off. Instead of the dead body of their friend, they find an angel who declares, you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. The old saying, of course, is that two things are certain, death and taxes. The women that first Easter morning discover that death is not as certain as they thought. We, this Easter, have discovered that even taxes can be postponed. As the coronavirus pandemic encircles the globe, we are alarmed. Like the three women that first Easter morning, we are alarmed because all bets are off. The things we thought we could count on. Well, maybe we can't. The things we thought we knew, well, maybe we didn't. The places that are always full are empty. The places that are always open are closed. The people who should be here are not here. Several weeks ago, Elizabeth's parents bought us some milkweed plants. They know that I'm always on the lookout for plants for our garden, and milkweed, maybe you know, is the plant that monarch caterpillars feast on before they become monarch butterflies. And in just a couple of days, sure enough, there they were, 
monarch caterpillars crawling all over, feasting on our milkweed leaves. A few days later, though, I began to worry. You see, these were hungry, hungry caterpillars, and our milkweed plants were running out of leaves. But this was back in the age when you could just go to the store whenever you wanted to go to the store, so I did. I went to several stores, actually, all over town looking for milkweed, and I found exactly none. I went home, grieving a little, knowing what would be the fate of our little crew of caterpillars. But when I got home, they were gone. The milkweed was stripped clean, and the caterpillars were nowhere to be found. We looked, and we looked, and we looked. We couldn't find them. But it turns out, they were exactly where they should be. You see, a couple of weeks later, I was tending to a different part of the garden, not far from where those milkweed plants had been. And lo and behold, there on the underside of a branch were several chrysalises, monarch caterpillars preparing to become monarch butterflies, exactly as it should be. When the women went to the tomb, they knew. They knew that Jesus would be there dead. But they discovered that he was alive and that he was not there. Instead, he was exactly where he should be, on his way to Galilee, to meet the disciples there. To begin the next season of his ministry, a season in which the Christian mission will not just resume, but will explode out to every corner of the earth. I must confess that when this year began, when 2020 began, I was imagining Easter Sunday morning much different than this. I was imagining coming here, and I knew you'd be here too. But you're not. You're not here. You're at home, exactly where you should be. And it's hard. I know it's hard to be cooped up when you want to be out. I know it's hard to be away from people you love. I know it's hard to make something like school happen at home for your kids every day. I know it's hard that every tickle in your throat makes you wonder if you're sick. We are unsettled, all of us. We are alarmed. But it's Easter, and all bets are off. So I wonder, maybe... Maybe God is making this quarantine into a chrysalis. In its chrysalis, a caterpillar is becoming a brand new creation. And while that's happening inside, the world outside is changing too. All around, rainstorms pass through, the earth greens, trees blossom, flowers bloom. And when the butterfly emerges from her chrysalis, She emerges a new creation. She emerges a new creation into a new creation all around. This is an unsettling, alarming Easter. Because all the places that should be open are closed. All the places that should be full are empty. But when we emerge from this chrysalis, and we will, when we emerge, we will discover that we are a new creation emerging into a new creation all around. Unsettled and alarmed as we may be, it's still Easter. The tomb is still empty, exactly as it should be, because emptiness, for God, has always been a place to plant new life. It goes back to the very beginning. This is just what God does. At the very beginning of the Bible, the earth is formless, and empty and then God speaks and life begins later in the story there's a woman and a man Sarah and Abraham Sarah for years for decades has been in the language of scripture barren unable to have a child then one day they're visited by an angel who says this time next year Sarah will have a son And she laughs. She laughs because she's gotten to the point where she cannot even imagine 
anything but emptiness. And wouldn't you know, the angel was right. She had a son. Her emptiness became home to all the promise and possibility of new life. Friends, it's Easter. All bets are off. Well, except the one. There's one thing we can count on this Easter and every Easter. The tomb is empty. And new life overflows from its emptiness. There's one thing that cannot be quarantined, and it's the love and the power of God. There is one thing that will never change, and it's God who is making all things new. So this Easter, if you've ever believed that you weren't good enough, empty that out. If people have always told you that you won't amount to much, empty that out. If you're afraid that you're not worth loving, empty that out. If you're worried that you don't have what it takes, empty that out and be filled Be filled with all the promise and possibility of new life. Because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and at work in you. The same power that emptied out Jesus' tomb will fill you up. It's Easter. Jesus is alive in you exactly where he should be. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, let's continue to worship God and praise the risen Christ as we sing together again. Would you sing wherever you are, the words will be on the screen.
friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. So go in peace to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And may the new life of Christ fill you to overflowing. Amen.